Okay, guys. Let's talk. I put off reading this book for a very long time. And I put it off on purpose. I put it off because I felt like I was too excited for the book and I didn't want to be disappointed. And I don't like it. <laughs> I, this book made me very angry. So I was excited about the book because it's set in New Beijing. It's sci-fi. It's a Cinderella retelling. All of these things. Just I was stoked. Well, this book came out. Just fucking stoked. Like, ridiculously excited to read this book. I ended up buying the book. And then I just held on to it. Oh, guys. Where do we start? The world building was terrible in this book. Terrible. There were so many holes. It was everything's given a half-ass explanation. For example. So, Cinder's a cyborg. She's a mechanic. Yep. She... She has a table that she has set up in the market and people come bring her things to fix. Then she basically turns all the money over to her stepmother. But immediately, like, I like the book. I like the premise of the book. I got a little bit into it and I was excited. But then as the scene at the market plays out, I'm already getting that first red flag. Like, the hell is this? So, Cinder's at the market and there's a lady with a bakery or a bake shop not that far away from her table and her kid runs over and she basically the lady snatches the kid up like cinder has the plague and i'm thinking okay she's a cyborg she's not a robot she's not an alien she's a human with what amounts to really ex expensive prosthetics and you guys are treating her like she has leprosy for what I don't understand I just felt like the level to which they ostracized her for being a cyborg it was a stretch a huge stretch you feel me like it's not really a believable reaction to me it's not a I feel like if Marissa Meyer wanted to make her cinder the underdog or make her into a character that you know majority of people just have a reason to hate then put more emphasis on the class system build a caste system into the story make her an alien or half alien in this world or this country that's clearly full of humans rather than you know she's looked down upon because just cybernetic body parts. It's just weird to me. I didn't like it. I didn't see a reason for it that made any kind of logical sense to me. She's not like she has artificial intelligence. It's not like she died and they brought her back and there's some reason for them to be like, oh my God, stay away. No, it's just she was in an accident per the story. At this point, she was in an accident, a, a vehicle accident, and she basically woke up and was like, bionic woman. And now everybody's like, oh my God, stay with her. Like, you're going to catch what? It's not even a disease. Like, cybernetic body parts are going to just, like, jump from Cinder onto you. No. So it was really weird. The fact that it's set in Beijing, I was super excited about. And I felt like that element was totally wasted. There was little to no Asian culture in here at all. There was... An inconsistent half-ass use of honorifics. There was an emperor instead of a king. And that's as Asian as the book got. There was, I think at one point, even they said the stepmother had a kimono on. I'm like, aren't you in Beijing? The fuck? I like authors who, when they put a book in a setting, for instance, I read historical romances a lot. And a lot of the authors who I favor, you can tell that they put a lot of research into political happenings, what, you know, they ate, drank, war how they survived how they built things they're, they're fairly accurate you can tell the author put some research into it this nothing but like she just took everything that like off the top of her head and was like okay that's that's enough to sell a believable yeah you can tell this is based mm -hmm. fail 
to fail. I feel like this is the equivalent of, you know, I am going to build a Chinese restaurant and I don't want it to be kitschy and touristy. I want it to be authentic. I want you to walk into my restaurant and feel like you're in Beijing. So what I'm going to do to decorate is I'm going to paint the building red. I'm going to paint the dining room red and I'm going to put lucky bamboo plants on the table. Yeah, see, authentic Chinese, right? No. Fail. So many elements were missing. So many. It just, it, it angered me. I felt like that was a really, really wasteful. Like you could have taken that and just, that would have made this book so much better. And just like the little slice of things, little details like that. The world building. It's understandable that when you have a retelling of a fairy tale, most like the bones of the plot are going to be predictable to an extent. Okay, fine. 50 or so, 60, 80 pages into this book. There's no point in reading it. I knew it was going to happen. Sorry, spoiler alert, <laughs> if you haven't read this book yet. The antagonist of this story, the evil queen, the lunar queen. She's supposed to be this really evil baddie who, in the way they write her, she's really not scary to me at all. Like, your main priority is, I don't want you to see through my glamour. And that's why people are scared of her, because she has glamour, but that's all she's really doing with it. Eh, eh. I mean, yes, granted should murder some people in order to take the crown that's understandable but that's kind of it's it's not really adding to the scary to me i don't know why she just didn't strike me as scary and i think the way that they handled the glamour thing had a lot to do with it and then also you i realized that with you know winter and crest and scarlet and whatever it's kind of like how once upon a time is the stories are all intertwined and this is really not cinderella's like evil queen it's snow white's and that was her thing was that fair, fairest one of all Okay, cool, but still, add some more to it. It just was, it just fell flat to me. I was like, she's not even scary. So the evil queen, Lavana, she's commenting, everybody's super scared of her. We're getting a little bit of the backstory. We're finding out that, um, Jesus, I almost died. Finding out, um, you know, she killed people to get to the throne. She even killed her baby niece. And then the fact that the prince kept focusing on that. Clearly she's coming back because there wasn't even a little honorary mention. They just kept kept going, literally beating me over the head with this information. What I want is information on how the Lunars came to be. You told me that they are human. Okay. They were a human colony that, what, voluntarily went up to the moon? Did they have the plague and got sent to the moon to be separated from everybody else to prevent contamination. Were they excommunicated and got sent up to the moon? Were they showing some kind of mutation? Like what happened? Did they do genetic testing and go, oh, ooh, you're a carrier for this plague. Your ass got to go. We're sending all you fuckers to the moon. Something. No, we just get kind of like a glaze over. Yeah, they're human people. They live on the moon. Now they have powers. Would we'll address that a little for me. I mean, you don't have to backstory me to death with chapters upon chapters and pages and pages and I can't even get a conversation complete without miles of backstory. No, I don't need that, but I need some of it. This, Marissa Meyer could have written that a lot of people were once humans or they once lived on earth. Through genetic testing to better our race, we found out that these people were carriers for the plague. So for their good and our own, they were sent up to the moon. But then, these plague genes that they carried interacted with the moon's atmosphere and now they have developed the ability to manipulate bioelectricity which gives them the ability to manipulate the patterns of our brain waves which can make us see hear say do whatever they want they can wipe our memories create new ones see everything we've ever thought that would make sense to me not just just off the top of my head that's that's something not just, yeah, they got powers. They were human now because they're on the moon. They have powers. Why is it because of the moon? Just what? That drove me nuts. But even still, we're, we're, we're still on the market scene. And I'm already like, all right, that's like three things already. That's rubbing me the wrong way. So now I'm not as excited about this book. But I keep reading. Stepmother, I mean, that that 
thing was to be expected that she got had one stepsister that she got along with was a nice twist that I didn't appreciate. I, it doesn't have to be canon to Cinderella. So that was cool. But the rest of it, it was just kind of annoying. But like I said, the way they they handled this backstory, um, when we get to learn a little bit more about Cinder, that her stepmother never wanted her, her stepdad basically wasn't even her stepdad. He adopted her or found her, presumably to keep her safe. And the stepmother was against it. And that's, that's all you got. But then, you know, to be a cyborg, I'm assuming Cinder has all this extra strength. She has basically a computer chip that lets her, gives her all this access to information in her mind. Just, just Google in her head, basically. And you couldn't find a way or a better way to hide your money from your stepmother or to get off from under her. You don't have to marry sue her, but utilize what you have for something other than obviously working on mechanic stuff. So the thing with the doctor, later on after, you know, he's let her go and for some stupid fucking reason she's basically free. Her stepmother thinks she's dead and gone. And she goes back to her stepmother's house. Why? I don't know. But, you know, after all this, and she was talking to the doctor again, and they find out Queen Levon is coming. Again, we have this, like, info dumping of the, like, tiny pieces. They were just kind of, like, scattered. What this came off as to me is I feel like she didn't want to give us a succinct, put-together, well-formed backstory too early. Because when you do that, and as the tale goes on, the readers get a sense of the rules are. The consistency lets us know, okay, this is what's allowed in this world. These are the rules, the physics, the laws. This is how stuff works. This is how the magic works. These are where you can find an exception. This is what, you know, there is no way around it, that kind of a thing. So when we don't get that, even if we don't get it, we don't need it the first page. But if we get like more than halfway through the book and we don't have that, I feel like the author is leaving his or herself an out. So later on, you don't, you couldn't figure out how to get the characters out of whatever corner you've written them into, like whatever the main plot of the book. If you can't figure out how to get them smoothly out of the issue, you just pull something out of your ass and be like, yeah, that was allowed. I knew that. You just didn't know that because I didn't tell you. But yeah, it was totally allowed the whole time. No, I didn't like it. I keep saying that, but I just really, I didn't like it. I wasn't recording. <laughs> I've been here talking to myself. My next point was that Prince Kai really worked my nerves. And the reason he worked my nerves was because he did a pretty good job of making it seem like he was interested in Cinder. The entire first like four fifths of the damn book not even like nine tenths of the book the whole fucking book basically you know she refuses she tells you she doesn't want to go to this ball she's not going she's just a mechanic she does everything she can to distance herself and then you save her a spot anyway as your personal guest so still looking highly interested sir highly fucking interested she shows up grease on her gloves that you bought her her stepsister makes a scene. Her stepmother makes a scene. Out slaps her in the middle of the entire ball. Still cool with it. She fucks up your plans. Kisses you in front of Queen Lavana. You're still cool with it. Queen Lavana threatens to basically fuck up the both of you. No, can't have her. She's my citizen. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Don't seem phased. I can get with that. I like it. And then Queen Lavana makes Cinder almost blow her own brains out in front of the entire ballroom. Then Cinder takes off a running and the poor baby's foot falls off. And you like, oh, safe word. I can't do it. Hell no. You can have her. She's a cyborg. I ain't even with that shit. Really? Really? You weren't even that fucking phase when you found out she was lunar, but it's the cyborg thing that threw you off? What? This is what I mean by it's a stretch. That dishonor. Dishonor on you, dishonor on your cow. Just, mm. That that was the end. And you know what? It could have been like a court of roses and thorns, a court of roses and thorns kind of a thing, 
where he was playing the jerk and he wasn't really, but considering it was only two seconds at the end of the book, I don't care enough to read the second one to find out. It made me that angry. I'm done. No more. Sorry, Marissa. I can't. I can't. That made me so mad. So probably wasn't the best idea to put up my first book vlog bitching about a book that everybody appears to love except me. I think out of all all the reviews, I think there's maybe I've read like one bad one out of like 200. Is there anybody out there that didn't like it or am I like the only one on booktube who didn't like it? Um, let me know if <laughs> there's someone besides me. Even if you do like it and I don't, you got some points you want to debate with me about, you know, things I just talked about, comment, hit me up, we'll chat. That's it for today. See you next time. Thanks, guys.